Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drone. So today I just want to have a look at these three brushed 1080p GPS drones. So these are probably the best, some of the three are the best on the market at the minute. I've already reviewed this against this, uh, the SG900S against the Vizio XS812. But now we've got the Eosheen E511S which you'll have seen a review that I did on recently. So cost wise, these two are about the same price, this is slightly more. But I believe if you shop around you can probably buy this a little bit cheaper. There's probably about 10 quid difference between this and these. But is it worth the extra tenner or is this one still the best? So let's have a quick review. So the controllers. I still love the controller from the SG900S. I think it's amazing. It feels fantastic. I love the, I love it, the feel of it in my hand. I love the way the phone clips in. I love the stands on the back. I just absolutely love this controller. There's nothing I don't like about this controller at all. And I said that in the initial review. The Vizio controller is more your uh, kind, I don't know, I suppose it made it more look like, to try and look like hobby grade, but it's not hobby grade transmitter. It's a bit, it's bigger compared to these. And with the folding drone, it seems to kind of defeat the object. Fly superb, so controller feels nice. It feels cheap in your hand, but it does fly the drone really well. E511S, if you've watched my channel, you know I absolutely hate these controllers. I think it was a bit of a cop out, they made a drone that's expensive, put a lot of effort into the look of it and then have this thing. Don't get me wrong, it controls the drone fine, it feels fine to control, the resolution feels decent on sticks. I just do not like it at all, I don't like these controllers. One little bit, I think it's cheap and it's tacky. The drone and quality of build. So, I actually said in my last video the build quality was decent. Someone did point out that there was an issue with the battery and it not fitting in. You're quite correct, and I did say that. Apart from the battery then, I think I like the build quality of this. I like the way it falls. It feels kind of tough in your hand. The plastic feels quite strong and stiff. The, the legs don't feel like there's no movement. Look, at that. There's absolutely no movement in them joints at all. So apart from the battery that I had an issue with, which now obviously was all by heating it up, I've had no issue with the build. I haven't crashed any of these so I can't quali qualify on that. The plastic, they're going to break if you crash them hard, let's be fair. They're not durable. These are cheap budget drones. So, build quality on that, I love it. The build, this feels flimsier, much flimsier. When you've had this in your hand, this feels a lot, lot flimsier, I'll be totally honest with you. This now feels a bit flimsy, the joint feels flimsy, there's a lot of movement in the arms. And then you've got the SG900. Again, there's a lot of movement in the arms, but it feels nice in your hand. But weight-wise, it's a lot lighter than this one. Camera quality, in my opinion, there isn't that much between them. I think the qu camera quality on this one is still the best. Uh, I, haven't flo I haven't flown them again today because of the weather, but what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll put clips in of all three of them in the air so you can make your own mind up about the camera. They are filmed in different places. All you need to look for on the video is a clarity of picture. Forget the movement, forget if it's a rainy day or a wet day or a dry day. Just have a look and see what you think of the clarity in the camera to make your mind up. So, but the one important thing for me about all these three drones is how it flies. Forget the cameras, forget the controllers, forget everything else. On one of these drones, because it is a budget drone, I'm on about the way it flies. So, this flies to me my least favourite and I'm going to tell you why. So when I first reviewed this on the initial review it flew super, couldn't fault it. When I reviewed it and flew it against this I had all sorts of problems with it. It was I calibrated the compass many times, it wasn't toilet bowl and there was just so much movement it wouldn't seem to lock into a proper GPS. I've flown it since and it flew beautifully again. So and I've seen videos of this not flying well at all so in my opinion this maybe doesn't have the best GPS module in the world in it. My opinion, that's all it is. I'm not saying for definite, I'm not, I'm not checking it in bits to have a look. This one flies the same thing every time to get out of the box. It's locked in, it flies beautifully. When it's in the air, you would not know you were flying a brushless, a brush drone. It flies like a brush, brushless drone, it's just not as quick. It's very smooth, very precise, return to home, fantastic on it, and I absolutely love flying this thing. 
This one's recent. I see you've seen the video. I don't know if you saw the video I did recently on this one. So you've seen it fly. It flies really well. I love the way it flies. I really do. It's nice. Its characteristics are nice in the air. I just think it's expensive for what it is. I think I said that in the initial review. But yeah, it's all right. It doesn't have any kind of bad tendencies, but it just doesn't fly as well as the Vizio. It doesn't. There's just no way it does. This thing, still to me, is the best. So when you take everything into account, I still have this as number one, I have this as number two, and this as number three. These are my opinions only. People have different opinions and different things. It's just what I think at the minute, and I prefer this drone. I still think that it's, it's out there to be beaten and I will continue to review uh, other brushless drones I've only compared and if you know I've done other reviews on other drones and I haven't compared them against this because they either don't have an SD card or they're not 1080 I'm only comparing the like for like here the other one on this one of course it's got an adjustable camera but to be fair it's, it's not smooth so you can't really adjust it when you're flying it's just it's nice to line up your shot so, I still prefer the Vizio. The Vizio is still king to me. Can someone beat? Can something beat it? Well, let's stay tuned. As soon as one comes out, another one, I'll buy it. we review it against it, and then I'll review it against this, and probably this now. Because the SG900S, for me, is no longer viable. I know there's a load of people love it out there, and that's great, but I just can't rely on it so when I take it out I don't know how it's going to fly one day to the next this is perfect and the three times I've flown this I've had no issues with it either well one thing I didn't mention uh, the connectivity of the app this is the worst one then this then this but there's not much in these two these two are pretty similar about 250 meters you're going to lose connectivity this one could lose connectivity at 80 meters which is a bit inexcusable 250s in an open field. You won't get that if you're flying in an urban area. You're probably going to be down to 80 on this, but so 250 in a field or something where it's open. So thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. I'll leave you with footage of all three. Just a quick minute flight of each three. I'll put on the screen which one's which, so you can make your own mind up. Have a fantastic day. Thanks ever so much for watching.
Thank you.